and welcome to our next edition of Cooking with Michael. First, I want to take a step back and thank, again, everyone who watched last week's episode. It was a great episode and really enjoyed it. I also want to say thank you to those of you uh, who have been helping us with some camera angles and some different ideas for lighting and uh, different ways to show the food and what we're doing. It's been a big help and we're continuing to get that feedback from everyone and I'm loving every minute of it. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Tonight, another great episode. We've even gone one step further. First of all, I'm going to tell you what we make. We're going to make a cornmeal encrusted Rambo trout. Okay? We're going to basically put that on a, on a griddle and we're going to cook it. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're also going to make garlic mashed potatoes. Homemade garlic mashed potatoes. It's a great dish. One of my favorites to make. You'll, I think you'll love it as well. I think you'll uh, get a, 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 a real enjoyment of watching the video as well as learning something and hopefully you'll try it and you'll really, really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite dishes, like I said. Um, but what we're also going to do is we went on location. Yes, we're kind of branching out a little bit. We went on location. What we did was we went, I took some video at my fishmonger's place. So if you've watched my videos before, you've heard me talk about the fact that I have a fishmonger. All of my seafood is fresh, whether it's uh, fresh fish, uh, fresh clams, fresh mussels, fresh crab, fresh shrimp, whatever. Uh, it's fresh. Uh, in that same place, they also do meat. So the meat is also fresh. So when I do steaks and when I do chicken, all of that stuff very fresh within the last couple of days. So excellent food, uh, just a great place. And so what you saw, or what you're going to see tonight is you're going to see some video of the fishmonger preparing the, the fish for us. Um, basically, I, I bought uh, rainbow trout, like I said, which is what we're going to use for dinner tonight. Uh, but we got the whole fish, and we're actually going to uh, show them while they scale it for us and fillet it for us. And that will be in the video as well. So I'm really excited about adding that piece to it. So we're going to be doing more of that stuff as we add more to the videos. So... Uh, keep watching, keep enjoying, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to get ready to start the garlic mashed potatoes. Uh, I'll show you how to do that first, and then we'll go into the salmon, uh, I'm sorry, not salmon, the, um, we'll go into the rainbow trout and show you how to make that and uh, show you how to make a great dinner. So enjoy, sit back, I'm going to pause, and we'll come right back. All right, so here we are, we're getting ready to do our garlic mashed potatoes first. I'll uh, start off with the ingredients, uh, show you what we're going to use to make it, and then we're going to go into the next step. However, first before we do that, I want to thank my wine guy. Uh, I will get at some point a video of, of that as getting the wine as well uh, and add that into my video. But I want to thank my wine guy, Andrew, who uh, of course has taken care of getting the uh, Pinot Grigio for the evening. So I have my Pinot Grigio. As you know, that's a must when we cook, so I'm going to put that over here. And I have my glass. I'm going to take my sip. Okay, we'll put that over here as well. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the ingredients for uh, garlic mashed potatoes. Real easy. First, we start off with golden potatoes. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I typically make homemade mashed potatoes, I typically use a red potato. Uh, they're smaller. I use several of them. Uh, five, six, eight, depending on the size of the mashed potatoes that I'm making. Um, but tonight I'm using golden, and the reason I'm using golden is one reason, one reason only. My seven-year-old came with me shopping to get the food, and he said, Daddy, get the golden ones. I like them better than red. Okay, so we're going to do that. Um, we're not going to peel them. We're going to leave the, the skins on them, make some nice uh, tasting uh, mashed potato. And, and we're going to cut it up. We're going to put it in water to boil. So I'll show you that. I actually got four of them. Uh, I'm only using four because, again, for date night, it's just you and a loved one. So I'm going to make a small amount, not a huge amount. Uh, so I got four potatoes. Um, and they're basically, you can take a look at the size. I mean, they're about medium size. Not too big, not too small. So it should be just enough for what we're looking for. We then use an entire stick of butter. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Um... I personally believe you can never use too much butter. So I'm using an entire stick of butter. I think it helps make them not only creamy, a nice buttery taste, excellent. I'm gonna use two teaspoons 
of minced garlic. As I've said before, you can always use fresh garlic. Uh, it's just uh, time consuming to uh, cut in the, get the cloves out and, and mince it and chop it up yourself. Um, I use the min already minced garlic because, from Aldi, um, because again, the whole idea is ease, quickness, getting the dinner ready, getting everything going. And then of course, milk. Now, I, there is no actual amount of milk you use. And the reason why is because milk is really going to make it either a more lumpy mashed potato or more creamy mashed potato. And it really depends on your specific taste. I like a little bit more of a lumpier mashed potato and not creamy. So I use a little bit less milk. But when I do it, and I'll show you this, we're going to add milk as we're going, as we're mixing it to try and uh, keep it from adding too much. If you add just a little bit of time, you can't add too much. It's perfect. So I'll show you all that. We'll get that ready, and we'll come right back, and I'll show you as I'll adjust the camera angle, and I'll show you how we're going to cut up the potatoes, put it in the stove, or put it in the pot, and get them boiling. So hold on one second. Okay. So you can see I adjusted the camera angle so we can show you what we're doing. We're going to take our potatoes out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, before I start cutting the potatoes, I'm going to move the bowl out of the way. Um, I'm going to use that later on for the, uh, the rainbow trout. But I'm going to go ahead and just turn on the burner to start boiling the water. i got my pot here. Uh, let me move the camera up just a little bit. There's my pot. Got my pot there. And I'm going to uh, wait when the water boils. I'm going to put the potatoes in. Actually, as I'm cutting it, I'm going to put the potatoes in. Uh, let it boil. I'm going to let it boil for about 30 minutes. Um, that way, you, you make sure the potato is fully cooked. It's nice and uh, you know a bad way of saying it, but it's it's mushy. Uh, you're going to try to check it with a fork. You're going to make sure it's not too hard. Uh, the mushier, the better. The better the mashed potato. So, take my knife. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this up. And I'm cutting it into smaller pieces, uh, primarily to, for ease of cooking. Um, it makes it cook a little bit faster. So I'm just slicing it, putting it right in there. Put that in there. And I'm going to do that with my other, the rest of them that I have here. And again, just uh, four slices is fine. Um, again, the whole idea is to make sure they cook a little bit faster because again you're going for time uh, as well as tastiness. This one's a little bit smaller so I'll kind of do it that way. It doesn't really matter how you slice them or how you cut them up or whatnot. Um, but again get the four in there and put them in and that's it for the potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside right now. Uh, sorry for the frame there a second. I'm going to let this boil. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down and I'm going to get a, uh, a lid to put up top of, of the pot. Let me show the pot there. Um, you can see it's just a medium sized pot. Uh, fill it up about three quarters of the way, halfway. Uh, put your four potatoes in there and let them boil. So, got my lid. Put my lid on it. Now, I'm going to do is kind of just let it go there for a minute. And um, that's pretty much it. We're going to let that go for about 30 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and uh, we'll show you what we do next. So while that is actually uh, starting to boil and letting it go, what I'm going to do is actually going to set my timer for uh, 30 minutes. It's boiling. Set my timer for 30 minutes. While that's doing it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the uh, cornmeal ready for the rainbow trout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the, the cornmeal what I use. I use a coarse cornmeal. Okay, It's actually a Hispanic cornmeal. Um, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of brands out there. Um, I actually got this at the same place that I got my uh, fish for the fishmonger. Uh, but I'm going to use a coarse cornmeal. There's different types of cornmeal. There's a fine cornmeal um, which is almost like a flour, um, like a regular uh, baking flour that you would use, all-purpose flour, and then coarse. I use the coarse because it adds a little bit of texture to the fish, and also you can taste it a little better, which is great. And that's really what you're kind of trying to do, again, is taste that extra flavor on top of the fish. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, you're looking at a, at a, a 
you're, you're looking for a, a solo, not a symphony, um, or a symphony, not a solo. Um, you're really looking for the whole uh, flavor. You're not trying to have one thing overpower the other, one flavor overpower the other. So you're really looking for, again, the symphony, not the solo. Um, and this adds to it, but it's not overpowering. So you definitely want to use uh, something that's not going to overpower the fish taste. Because the fish is going to be a very, very good fish on its own. This just enhances it, which is what the whole idea of adding to it is enhancing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my cornmeal bag. Uh, interesting part is my wife, uh, when she's putting these things away, because after I'm done cooking, she tends to put some of the stuff away um, just because that's just how she is. Um, but she uses masking tape to cover up the, uh, <laughs> cover up the, or close up the bag. So, uh, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of the cornmeal and I'm going to put it in here. A couple of cups. Um, unfortunately, some of it's going to get wasted. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you. Some of it's going to get wasted uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the fish, and I'll show you that in a little bit, that we're going to take the fish and we're going to basically roll the trout in the cornmeal. Um... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the camera down again. There is what it looks like, and again, just a couple of uh, just a cup or two of cornmeal in there. Um, you'll use what you can uh, to coat the fish, and the rest of it, unfortunately, is going to get tossed. So that is we'll get to use that for now. Put that in the back there to get ready for the fish. Uh, we're not going to do anything else right now with the fish. Um, so, but I am going to take a drink of my. Grigio. And uh, I'm going to put us on pause real, real quick and I'm going to talk about the fish uh, a little bit while I'm waiting for this to boil. So hold on one second. Okay, as I said, well, that's boiling. I've adjusted the angle back a little bit of the camera. Uh, so as I talked about, I use fresh fish. I have a fresh rainbow trout. Uh, and I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Uh, how they get it ready for you. When I pick it up at the uh, market, uh, the fishmonger takes it. I pretty much got to tell them, you know, how I want it. Do I want it filleted? Do I want it just cut? Do I want it cleaned? How do I want it? I, nine times out of ten, will get it filleted uh, with the bones removed. Honestly, again, it's just for ease of cooking. Uh, some will get it, keep the bones in there, make it more a little, you know, natural flavoring, um, a little more natural cooking, things like that. Um, I just want to check on the pot real quick. Um, some will, will do it just uh, clean and they'll use the whole fish uh, and they'll cook it uh, in the oven, which you can do. Uh, it's just a bunch of different ways, but I get mine filleted. It's easiest uh, to cook and easiest to work with in my opinion. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to break away from our video and I want you to see my fishmonger in action. I'm going to show you the fish that they have all there. And I'm also going to show you how the uh, how they scale it and uh, fillet it for me. So you get a little bit of an idea of what they're doing when I get it from the fishmonger. It's a great, great way to get fish, fresh fish, fantastic. I hope you enjoy that and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it gets back into, uh, into my house. All right, thanks so much and sit tight and watch it and I think you'll enjoy it. And this is my fishmonger uh, where you can see a nice mix of live fish and then already cut fish which is fantastic, great selection all the way through. Uh, and then we look over here, you can see Miguel, who always takes great care of me. He is actually taking my trout right now and he's scaling it and he's getting ready to fillet it. Uh, fantastic job, he always, always does a great, fantastic job. Um, and I highly recommend him whenever you get a chance to get some fish. So thanks again, Miguel, and uh, now you see what it looks like. So I'm gonna show you what the trout looks like. So this is what rainbow trout looks like. Um, I do have to get, uh, one of the things I've been working on is trying to get the lighting a little better, so I have to get maybe different colored plates, um, because it does kind of white wash out a little bit, but, uh, if you can tell, the fish itself is a little pink, um, but not real pink, it's a little bit of grayness to it as well, um, it does still have the skin on the back, and let me tell you a little bit about, uh, fish, so when you are buying the fish, there's different types, depending on where you go, whether you go to a regular grocery store, a fishmonger, um, wherever you get your seafood from. Uh, it depends on really how fresh it is. 
It also depends on where they're getting their fish. Are they pulling the fish uh, just from the ocean, from the wild? Is it wild caught? Or is it farm fed, uh, farm fed, farm raised fish? Uh, I can tell you this trout is actually uh, fresh, not from the farm, but some of the fish that I've gotten at the fishmonger is actually farm raised. Not a big deal. Um, it depends really on kind of your beliefs on sustainability for fish and, and whatnot, but not a big deal. Let me take a second. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit and start to boil uh, over. So we turn down just a little bit. Anyway, so the whole idea of, of fish is sustainability. Um, certain fish are more prevalent in the wild than others. Trout is actually a pretty good sustainable fish. It's pretty much out there. It's in good, uh, plentiful supply. Um, so, you know, this is actually a fresh one. And the good thing about going to a fishmonger is it's actually dated. Uh, when they catch the fish, they actually date it and they tell you when it caught, where it was caught. Um, so this is actually caught off the coast um, by a Maryland fisherman. I, mean, I live in Maryland. Um, it may not actually be considered a, a Maryland fish, but it is off the coast of Maryland. I'm going to be honest with you, wherever the heck you catch trout, I'm not real sure where the trout comes from, if, you know, whatnot. But um, this is what's caught off the coast. It is uh, fresh. Um, certain fish also can be cooked different ways. Um, we'll talk about salmon in a different episode. We'll talk about tilapia in a different episode, whatnot. Um, salmon can be cooked and still be cooked with a rareness to it. Um, it's always a pink fish, and when it's cooked, it's a lighter pink. Uh, but some people do like having rare. And what the F FDA has said uh, recently over the last couple of years is a lot of these fishes that we are serving can be cooked uh, rare, not fully cooked where it's you know fully done all the way through, and still be safe to eat. And I do cook my salmon rare. I also cook uh, uh, tuna can be rare. Um, tilapia should be done all the way through. The rainbow trout that we're talking about tonight definitely should be cooked all the way through. It's a very good fish, a very healthy fish, um, but it does have the chance of having some mercury in it as well as some other um, bio whatever uh, in the fish. So, But if you cook it all the way through, you're going to cook all of that out and it's going to be a safe, great fish to eat. Uh, you don't want to overcook it, but you do want to cook it to where it goes from that pinkish flavor or pinkish color that we just showed you to a white all the way through and flaky. That's how you know it's done. And you wanna make sure that's how it's done. Uh, trout is not something you wanna cook rare. Um, so, and, and most recently I did check on the um, FDA's website just to make sure they had updated that for trout. And as of uh, about two weeks ago, they were still saying that trout really should be cooked fully. So it's fully white all the way through. And uh, the way we're gonna cook it tonight, It'll cook fairly quickly, uh, it'll cook evenly, and it's gonna taste and look great. So while we're waiting, we've got about uh, about 20 more minutes so on the potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause us, uh, talk a little bit about the fish, talk about everything. I'm gonna pause us, and when I come back, I will show you how we do the uh, mashed potatoes, the garlic mashed potatoes, get them ready. And basically, we're gonna cook them and get them all done before we move forward on the uh, trout because the trout like I said will cook fairly quickly and the potatoes will stay warm in the pot so and of course I have a warming center on my my stove as well so sit back and uh, have a little more Pinot Grigio I know I'm going to have a little more Pinot Grigio and uh, we'll be back uh, here shortly and we'll do the potatoes okay sit tight okay so I'm gonna look at the timer here we got about another minute or so on the timer I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check, um, actually I'm going to adjust the camera just a little better, hold on a second, there we go, I'm going to check the pot there and take a look to see how the dinner is doing, ah, perfect actually, so in just about another minute or so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to drain them and then I'm going to put them into the mixing bowl, now, a couple of things, I'm going to use my KitchenAid mixer because you heard me before, love this thing, uh, it makes cooking so much easier. So I'm going to use the KitchenAid mixer again for this. But you can use a hand mixer, um, one of the electric hand mixers, and use it right in the pot. Um, either way, I don't have a hand mixer. To be honest, I did have one. Uh, I broke it. 
So I don't have one at the moment, but I do have the KitchenAid mixer, which will do uh, the job in a pinch and do a great job with it. So I'm going to uh, go ahead. I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'm going to uh, drain the potatoes, and I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished straining the potatoes. I'm going to take my bowl, take the potatoes from the colander, and I'm going to put them right inside there. So you see, they're still uh, the big cut potatoes. You know, as I said, take each potato cut about four or five times. Um, still big cut potato. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on the mixer itself. I'm going to adjust. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put, I'm going to use uh, my, my whisk uh, blade for this. Okay, it's already on there. I'm going to push this down. I'm going to lock it in place. On this side, there's a lock in place. The reason why that's there is it doesn't come up and down. And as this uh, is mixing, it could potentially shove it up and down. Um, and what that does will help make the food splatter. So if you lock it in place, it's not going to do that. I'm going to then turn this on uh, just to stir low speed and get the potatoes started before I put in the rest of the stuff. So we're just going to get it started here just a little bit. There we go. Just enough to mash them up. And then I'm going to stop. Now what I'm going to do is, and I said this before, I'm going to take a full stick of butter. And honestly, again, you just can't use too much butter. Butter is probably the best thing that humans ever invented. Um, some doctors may not agree, but I don't care. So I'm going to take that, put that away. I'm going to take my plate, put that in the sink. And I'm going to go ahead and stir that together. And it's going to mix the potatoes. While it's doing that, I'm going to take my household spatula. Okay, and I'm just going to push it down some just to keep it together there. Now, while it's doing that, I'm going to turn that off because it's uh, cooking or it's um, uh, mixing very well. I'm going to take my garlic. Remember, I told you two teaspoons of garlic. Okay, so I'm going to take two teaspoons of minced garlic. And again, I use the mince because it's just easier than having to take fresh garlic and chop it all up. So two teaspoons of garlic, put that in there. Put this aside. And then I'm going to take a little bit of milk. I'm not going to do a lot of bit of milk. Remember, the milk is to determine the creaminess of the potatoes. The less milk, the more clumps. The more milk, the more creamy. I like it less creamy, so I'm going to go ahead and put in just a little bit of milk. Okay, to start off with, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the stir and stir it up. And I'm going to take my spatula and push down on the sides. You want to make sure you get everything. You don't want to have, um, you know, big large chunks of potatoes on the side of the the bowl while you're mixing it, because you want to try and get everything as mixed as you can. Okay. And actually, it looks like, and this never happens, but it look, looks like I used the right amount of milk the first time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the mixer. I'm going to raise it up. Okay, you can see that that actually stays in my my whisk, and I'm just going to kind of scrape it out there. Okay, and we check the consistency. Consistency is really a about taste okay it can be clumpy it can be creamy there's nothing wrong with really creamy mashed potatoes and there's nothing wrong with really clumpy mashed potatoes unless you personally don't like them like i said i like a little clumpier so i'm going to look at that and you know what if you can see that it looks perfect okay so i'm going to go ahead and stop it well actually i'm not going to stop it yet i'm going to go ahead and uh take my spatula and put it in the sink I'm going to remove this, the bowl, okay? I'm going to put the bowl over here in the back. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a lid on top of it. You can use the lid that you use to boil them. You can use uh, plastic wrap, what have you. Okay, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'm going to get this out of the way. Okay, you can see I moved the camera angle back up so you can see me, uh, so I can talk about our next steps. The potatoes are done. They're going to sit in the back here on a warmer and they're gonna stay warm while I'm doing this. The next part's gonna go fairly quick. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to move the camera angle back down. I'm gonna show you how we set up the, the griddle, and I'm gonna show you how we uh, get the, the 
uh, trout ready and how we cook it. So I'm going to put us on pause real quick. All right, so I moved the griddle, got the griddle in place here. I'm going to take, uh, basically, I'm going to plug it in. Uh, my griddle, if, if uh, you've watched it before, I've used my griddle before. My griddle has a basically an off all the way up to a five setting. Uh, zero being off. And then I have a one, two, three, four, and five. Five being the hottest. I'm going to actually put this on to about a three and a half to four. Okay, I'm going to let that heat up. Um, these electric griddles will heat up pretty quickly, so that's a good thing. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my cornmeal. Remember, we talked about the coarse cornmeal. That's what we want to use, coarse cornmeal. It does add that uh, bit of flavor without overpowering the fish and still give you a nice crunchy taste of the fish, which is good too. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to pull up my trout. And we did talk about the trout before, uh, so just remember that. I'm going to let that sit there for a second while I get ready for check this and see how this is coming along. Like I said, this does heat up pretty quickly. I'm going to grab my spatula from behind the camera. Sorry about that. And remember how we check to make sure the griddle is done? By the way, just in case you're wondering, Phoebe, ladies and gentlemen, she has come in to take a look at what we're doing. So she's uh, watching. So as I said before, Phoebe's actually here. So. Uh, I'm going to check the griddle. Again, you just take a little bit of your finger on your stove, on your uh, sink and splash a little bit of water. Not quite ready yet. Um, but while it's doing that, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the camera up just a bit. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, trout. I'm going to roll it in, actually kind of roll it in the, the cornmeal. Um, you want to make sure the trout is basically dry, okay? Uh, if it's still moist, um, which is fine, you can't get it completely dry, but you want to dry and get it as much as you can, you can use a paper towel and pat it down to make it as uh, dry as you can, okay? I'm actually going to have to do that. Um, fresh fish, as opposed to frozen, uh, is going to be more dry when they fillet it, so I don't really have to do that, which is great. Um, and then once I roll it in the cornmeal, I'm going to first, when I put it on to the griddle, I'm going to put it skin side down, okay? Skin side down first, okay? Because that you're going to take the bulk of that cooking is going to be in the first round. Each side you'll do four to five minutes, okay? So after you put it on there, five minutes, you flip it over. You do about five minutes on that side. The length of cooking, again, is really going to depend on the thickness of the filet, okay? Uh, our fillets are a little bit thick. They're kind of medium thickness, so it may take a little longer, but you can tell that when you're cooking it after you flip it over the second time because when, you, when you're done after the second four to five minutes, you're going to test with a fork, and if it's white all the way through and flaky, you're done. If it's not, you just cook it for a couple more minutes, usually about two to three minutes each side again, each additional time until it's fully cooked, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the camera back down there we go and the grill sounds like it's uh, ready to go but I'm going to test it and it's perfect so I'm going to take my first filet okay my first filet I'm going to put it in the cornmeal and I'm going to make sure it's as covered as it can get in the cornmeal okay again you're going to take make sure it's as covered as you can get and again, don't be afraid to use too much cornmeal, because honestly, what doesn't stick is going to come off anyway, so you really can't use too much. So just keep going around till you get it nice and covered, okay? And then again, skin side down, you put on the, on the griddle. Now I'm going to take my second one, okay? I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now remember, I said that, uh, you know, you put a couple of cups of the cornmeal into uh, the bowl, but you're gonna not use it all. You're gonna have to waste some of it. That's that's kind of a, the, the shame downside to cooking. Um, I have never really been able to figure out exactly how to get the exact amount of cornmeal that I want to use and use it all. Um, you know, when I'm cooking without throwing it away. So anyway, so I did that skin side down. I'm then gonna reach in and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal on top. Okay, just sprinkle a little bit over some of the spots that I may have missed. Okay. I'm going to put the cornmeal aside and I'm going to do the same thing to the back end, okay? And I'm going to let it cook for uh, four to five minutes on the one side, and then I'll flip it over and I'll show you what that looks like. So just sit tight. 
while it's cooking. I did move my Pinot Grigio on the other side, so I'm going to reach over. Sorry, I'm a little close to the camera. Get a Pinot Grigio, have myself a drink. And I'm going to wait. Um, I'll let keep the camera on there because so I'll change the angle. But just real quick, um, the one thing I found interesting when you're doing uh, any kind of fish with cornmeal, but with a trout with cornmeal, and you put it on there, onto the, the griddle, it smells like popcorn, which is really kind of cool. But the downside to that is, is my little minions upstairs that we put to bed that we have that we you know have to have our date nights for because we're spending so much time taking care of them. They smell it, they get popcorn and come running down the steps and go, Dad, you made popcorn. No, I didn't. I'm making cornmeal fish. And they run their little butts back up the stairs. So, uh, it does smell like popcorn. It's kind of a neat thing, but uh, just a little side note. So, I'm going to pause this again, and I'm going to check back here in a couple minutes when it's uh, been five minutes. Okay. So, it's been five minutes now, so I'm going to do, and you can see I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to flip it over. Slide this, this spatula in me, and flip it right over. You can see some of the cornmeal kind of flies across the room when you do that, which is fine. And let it sit there. I'm going to let that side cook for about five minutes. While I'm doing this, I'm going to take a little more cornmeal, spread it over the top. Again, this is the last time I'm going to do this, by the way. Um, the rest of this cornmeal, unfortunately, becomes uh, a casualty of cooking war, so to speak. So I'll put that out of the way. I'm going to let this go uh, now for five minutes, and then I'll flip it back over. We'll check it with uh, a fork, see again if it's cooked all the way through, and if it's flaky, if it is, uh, we'll put it on the plate and we'll, uh, we'll try it. So hold on a minute, we'll be right back. Okay, so it's been about uh, just under five minutes. I'm going to try and flip this back over now and we take a look and see what it's like. Remember, the cooking time really depends on the thickness of the fish. And as I'm looking at this right now, although there is whiteness to it, there's still a lot of pink. So we're probably going to be looking at another uh, four to five minutes on each side. So I'm going to let it cook for four to five minutes on this side, flip back over. And uh, so sit tight and we'll, uh, we're will we going to put it on pause and we're going to see what it looks like in a few minutes. All right. It's been about uh, five minutes on this side again. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it back over. And again, we'll do it evenly on the other side, five minutes. You can see this side is starting to brown slightly. So that's a good sign. Okay, so we're going to put it over there. You probably can hear it sizzle. Still smelling like that popcorn, but uh, it's a great smell. So, all right, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it uh, do about five minutes on this side. We'll flip it over. We'll take a look. But I think we're probably going to be right around done at that point because it's really starting to look good. So sit tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to check the, it's been five minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and check the, uh, the trout, flip it over. And it's all looking so good. Yes, I think. Let me get the fork out. And you want to check from the thickest part. Because remember, the thickest part, of course, and know this kind of goes without saying, the thickest part is the one that's going to take the longest to cook. So we definitely have ourselves uh, some nice white flaky fish. Some nice white flaky fish. Incredible. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a plate. I'm going to... Put this nice white flaky fish, put it on a plate, okay? I'm going to reach in, I'm going to grab some potatoes, my garlic mashed potatoes. All right, take my fork. I'm gonna move the camera up just a little bit here. That's how you build them, that's me. Move back some here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of the fish, okay? Mmm, perfect. Take a bite of my potatoes. Can't get any better than that. Excellent, excellent. So that is how you make cornmeal encrusted rainbow trout with garlic mashed potatoes. It's a great date night dinner. It doesn't take very long. It really, uh, it, it's, it's an easy dish to make. It's a fun dish to make. And uh, and I bet your spouse, your date night, your loved one will enjoy it. If not, at least they enjoy your company, hopefully. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Next week is a very special episode. It is my 10th year wedding anniversary. So I'm going to do something a little bit different um, for my anniversary. 
That remains to be seen. I'll show you what that is next week. But thank you again so much for watching. If you know anybody who would enjoy the channel, please share it with them. Have them subscribe. Watch. Give feedback. Give comments. Feel free to email me, text me, whatever you want to do. Uh, and let me know what you think. Give me some suggestions, whatnot. So on behalf of myself, my food, my Phoebe, my cat, my loved one, my spouse, my date night, who is uh, still upstairs with the kids. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, to all of you who have been helping and consulting with me, um, I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for all your help. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the next edition of Cooking with Michael. I hope you have yourself a great night. Good night, everyone.